Okay, uh, we'll continue with our discussion of frequency response. And in the past few videos, we've looked at transfer functions, low pass, high pass, band pass filters, and so forth. When we talk about low pass, high pass filters, I drew a magnitude uh, and phase response of those filters. And that was basically a plot of the magnitude of the transfer function with respect to the frequency and the phase of the transfer function with respect to the frequency. Those were both done in a uh, linear scale. Now, if you think about frequency, frequency can go all the way from DC to gigahertz range or even larger than that. So, showing magnitude phase with respect to frequency in the linear scale can take up quite a bit of the x-axis real state. And the frequency range of interest might be very constrained to a small range if you want to show the entire frequency range. So one of the things that we do typically when we have to deal with such large disparate values all the way from DC to gigahertz, let's say, 10 to the power 12, or 10 to the power 9, or 10 to the power 12, uh, larger frequency values is that we tend to use a log scale for the x-axis. And that way, we can represent frequencies all the way from DC to a larger values in a much constrained, the x-axis looks a lot more constrained. Similarly, on the y-axis, typically the, uh, there is a tradition of measuring the transfer function uh, magnitude in terms of its power, uh, in, a, in other words, in terms of its decibel value. So uh, we talk about decibel quite a bit. A decibel is basically taking the 20 log base 10 of the magnitude of the transfer function. So uh, that particular plot, instead of the linear plot of the frequency on the x-axis and a linear magnitude on the y-axis, and linear frequency on the x-axis and phase angle on the y-axis, uh, instead of plotting those, we plot log of the frequency in the x-axis and the decibel scale of the magnitude response on the y-axis for the magnitude and just the phase angle and the logarithmic uh, x-axis uh, frequency plot. So that has a special name and it's called Bode plot. So Bode plot is based essentially a plot of the magnitude and the phase angle uh, the magnitude is measured in decibel. So for transfer function h, the magnitude can be expressed in decibel as 20 log base 10 of h. Okay, so Bode plot is just those two plots, but in a frequency scale. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of Bode plots. So let's start with a simple one. Uh, let's say a constant uh, transfer function h uh, equals 100. Okay, so this is not very exciting. It's uh, but we'll start with this. So h equals 100 basically means there are no really frequency components to the transfer function. So the output is always 100 times the input voltage. That's what that's saying, right? So there is no frequency dependence of the output with respect to the input. So it's always going to be 100 times the input regardless of the frequency, okay? So what does this look like well, if we take the 20 log 10, uh, of this, so the magnitude of this is 100, right? So there's so no imaginary part. So magnitude of this is 100. If you take the log base 10 of 100, so 100 is 10 to the power 2. So log base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. So 20 log of 100 is 20 times 2, which is 40 dB. So 20 log 10 of the magnitude of edge, which is 100, 100. Uh, log 10 of 100 is 2, so 20 times 2 gives you 40 dB. So that's the magnitude uh, that we have. So now let's see, so if that's the magnitude we have, now let's see what the phase angle might be. So, uh, well, what does 100, uh, what does 100 really mean? Uh, it basically means if I was, ha if I had the real axis and the imaginary axis, 100 basically means there is no imaginary term. There is a, let's say, some line right here, so let's say that's 100 in the real axis. That's what 100 is. Well, with an angle of zero degrees from the real axis, right? So, so the phase angle of 100 is essentially zero, okay? So let's draw the, so here is my frequencies written as a logarithmic. So here's my log plot. So the frequencies are in log uh, radians per second. Uh, so they're given in logs. So this one says, 
that the frequency, the magnitude response in decibel in dB is 40. So let's pick a value. So here's my axis right here. And so that's my axis. So here it says that the magnitude response is 40. So it's a straight line 40 across all these frequencies. We also saw that in this case, the phase angle is, since it's only in the real axis, the phase angle is essentially zero. So let's call, let's call, oops, let's call this point zero, and we'll draw a straight line right through there, and that's zero degrees, okay? And the rest of the thing don't matter, so the phase angle is always zero, okay? So now, let's take a slight modified look at this same expression, but a different one. A transfer function that's negative 100. So it's similar to the previous one, except we have a negative 100 as the transfer function. Now what happens here? Now if I take the 20 log of, of magnitude of one, so what's the magnitude of this? Magnitude of this is 100. It's a, this is h j omega, but if I take the magnitude of h h, that's basically take the absolute value of h, which is 100. So that's what that is. So the magnitude of this is 20, take 20 log of that, it's still 40 dB. Now what happens with the angle? Well, the angle, minus 100, what does that mean? So if I started here, minus 100 means I'm 100 just in the real axis, but in the opposite side. So it is really essentially an angle of 180 degrees from origin, right, from, from my, uh, so here's the magnitude of 100, and that's my angle of 180 degrees from origin. So that's my phase angle right here. So when I drew the magnitude dB plot, well, the plot goes through 40 right there. When I want to do the angle plot, now I, instead of having 0 degrees, will have 180 degrees right there. So, so that's 180 degrees right there. So those were easy, uh, very easy. So transfer functions essentially with constants. So that's case number one. So we can have a positive constant or a negative con constant. And we looked at, saw how to draw the body plot for those. Now let's get a little more complicated. Let's say, what if we had h equals j omega? So h equals j omega. Okay, so this is the transfer function. Well, let's take the magnitude of that. What do we get? If we take the magnitude of that, we get h magnitude of h j omega equals just omega. Okay, <clears throat> that's just omega. 20 log of h is 20 log 10 of omega. Now, well, let's see what what this really means. Well, what is the y-axis? The y-axis is decibel, right? So that is really the y. So that's y. What's x-axis? x-axis is basically the logarithmic plot of the frequency, so that's x. Okay, when I'm plotting, so that's x. So I have y equals, well, that's a slope, right? So in my decibel, magnitude decibel to logarithmic frequency plus scale right here, that was decibel, Deci de that's a definition of what a decibel means. That is the x-axis of a logarithmic x plot. So this essentially says h equals j omega is of the form y equals mx plus c, where x is log 10 of omega. The y intercept c is equal to 0 because we have nothing here. And the slope is 20 dB. So that basically means for the magnitude plot, if I had these, that that basically means I start here at 0, OK, with a, at at a scale of 10 to the power 0 or on the log plot, and I go rise up like this with a slope of 20 dB per decade. So a decade basically is right here. So actually, this is uh, this is incorrect. It should have been right here. So that's a decade. Sorry, this is not a decade. So a decade is up to here. So that's one decade right there. And that's 20 dB rise from 40 to 60 right there. So the slope of this line is 20 dB per decade. So your magnitude plot on the body plot keeps rising like this. Well, how about the angle? Well, h equals j omega. So here we only have the imaginary part with the magnitude of omega, right? So 
that's omega right there and that is 90 degrees from the real axis so the angle is always going to be 90 degrees irrespective of the frequency so that's straight and that should be at 90 degrees so that angle right there is straight up at 90 degrees okay so h equals a omega produces a straight line up uh, produces a straight line up uh, with an angle of 90 degrees. So let's recap some of the things that we saw. We saw h equals 100 and h equals minus 100 constants and we saw that the Bode plots were basically magnitude plot was a straight line 40 dB across both of these guys. The phase angle was 0 degrees in this case because it's on the on the positive side of the real axis. The phase angle was 180 degrees in this case because it's a negative side of the real axis. H equals J omega went up at 20 dB per decade across all the frequencies. Now if I think about H equals minus J omega, what does that do? So the magnitude of H equals minus J omega is the same as the magnitude of this. Because if I take the mag magnitude of this, H magnitude of that is simply equal to omega. That means magnitude of this was also equal to omega. So this exact same thing applies. So the so the line is again in this case a straight line up with 20 dB per decade slope. The frequency, however, since this if I was look to look at the real and the imaginary axis, imaginary axis right here, minus j omega is on this side. So it's this angle right here from the real axis. So minus 90 degrees from the real axis. Or to think about it another way is to say 270 degrees from that axis. So my angle is actually minus 90 degrees for that particular example. So we've looked at a couple of um, Bode plot examples. Uh, again, why do we uh, draw Bode plots? Uh, Bode plots are nothing more than the and more than the magnitude frequency plot and the phase frequency plot that we saw for the filters earlier in order to make sure that we can see what the responsible circuit would be across a much larger spectrum of frequencies which would be much difficult to do in the linear section we body plot is essentially a special name given to a plot where the x-axis is in the log scale okay that's all a body plot is